Bryce Evans is the founder of The One Project. He is an award-winning photographer, artist, and marketing consultant discovering the art of life. He has built a community of over 50,000, worked with top international brands, and exhibited his artwork internationally, all to help inspire and share valuable insights. As founder of The One Project, Bryce is a leading expert in therapeutic photography, the healing power of photos, and how it can be used to help people suffering from depression and anxiety. Bryce? So today I want you to think about if you present your authentic self and if you live true to your authentic self. I kind of want to have this talk be challenging for you as well. Uh, so over the last five years, I've been using my artwork, my photography, my art, and sort of this way of communicating as a way of rediscovering and reconnecting with my own authentic self. This is a drawing I did when uh, in grade six. It was an assignment to draw yourself in the future, and I was bang on. Uh, <laughs> So this is me as an artist, a very prolific one. And uh, the painting that I had uh, sketched out was actually kind of close to my photo in the last slide, so um, might also be a fortune teller. Uh, and then over the last, or over the next few years in junior high and high school, I dealt with depression and anxiety. It was a time in my life where I didn't really express myself creatively, but as I started to use my photography once again, I started to understand that I was going through depression and anxiety, and it was actually with this photo that um, I started to communicate that to myself and others. As I started to uh, get into photography more, I started to challenge myself. I did a 365 project, a uh, photo a day. And this was a day uh, when I was going to sleep and I'd forgotten to take a photo, but I realized that as I was falling asleep. Woke up, took the photo, posted it, and immediately fell back asleep. Uh, that next morning I woke up and I was posting it on Tumblr and realized that I had gotten featured on Tumblr for the first time. It was kind of like that first nice uh, boost for my artistic ego. And so this is the, f the photo that I took that day. <laughs> sort of uh, an authentic smile. And... Oh, it did work. Awesome. So uh, in my kind of journey as an artist, uh, there's lots of highs, there's lots of lows, trying to figure out how to, what I want to say, how I want to say it, um, and least importantly, how to pay the bills at the same time. I'll just leave you with that for a second. <laughs> and... I hope it doesn't get stuck on this, because, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so when I did my first solo show, I, I'm very impatient, so I kind of took my own route with it, and I just rented out a gallery space, um, invested in it, but at the same time, found myself having to quit my job. So uh, it was kind of a very vulnerable point in my life, where it was the first time I was putting my art up on the walls for scrutiny, but also uh, kind of really needed money. And at that show, uh, I was exhibiting something else, but um, was really passionate about this other project that I was working on called The One Project. And at that show, I had a very sort of authentic and real conversation with someone about this photo and the story behind it. Um, her name's Ang Angelica. It was a friend of a friend of mine who was horribly bullied in school and uh, dealt with depres or depression and anxiety because of that. So what I did is I use that photograph that I had created and match her story with hundreds of other people's stories answering what is the worst thing that anyone's ever said to you. Created uh, this concept of erase bullying. And the conversation that I had at that exhibition was with someone at Lush Cosmetics. Um, they just so happened to also be thinking about putting on an anti-bullying campaign. They often run these ethical campaigns in their stores. So that conversation where, uh, at this exhibition where I sold absolutely nothing, and in my eyes I kind of saw it as a failure, led to uh, my first job and uh, something that was way out of the scope of what I thought this project would become. It was in uh, all their stores across North America, and basically 
um, people could come and physically erase the words that had been used it, the words that had been used against them in the past. Um, this is another exhibition with that actual series. It was uh, less about making money, more about making impact. It uh, unfortunately was in Calgary the night of the big flood, but I had a lot of people show up despite a state of emergency in the city that day. And I had a lot of real authentic conversations. Uh, that same year, it was kind of a crazy year. I ended up going to Italy in November to exhibit that same series. And at this time in my life, I felt very kind of vulnerable again, not knowing or not being able to speak the language of the people there. But I found that these photos and these stories that were really close to my heart and really kind of raw and authentic um, connected with people who didn't speak the same language. Uh, we were able to communicate through these photos uh, on issues that are just very human, um, things that cross languages or borders uh, or race. When I got back from Italy, that crazy sort of dream adventure that I was on for about a month, uh, I crashed. I had kind of been on this rocket ride of sailing past all my goals that I had and then came back to reality in Vancouver and not really sure what was next. Um, but I kept creating, I kept posting and, and sharing things with my community on, on uh, social media and my friends. Uh, I also had this very, very deep, intense spiritual experience. Uh, this journey of um, sharing and creating has also been kind of a spiritual journey for me and I had this experience that, to be honest with you, terrified me. The, as I was experiencing it, felt kind of like a near-death experience. Um, I was silent on it for a while and, again, really terrified, but ended up posting about it on Instagram and, and kind of sharing my story a little bit. And as soon as I did that, similar to all these other moments in my life uh, of creating and, and sharing, I had some, a lot of people um, connect with that and share similar stories. So it made me feel less alone, more human. And again, this process of just being authentic, trying to be honest in my artwork uh, and just create without uh, having my mind block me from that has led to amazing experiences like this uh, where I was able to create that photo while on a campaign out hiking with friends. It was amazing. I was also able to stand on a stage and tell a story that I had been silent on for years, something that I was terrified to tell one person and now I'm telling hundreds and thousands of people, like today at Pachakasha. <laughs> a little chit chat with you all. So one of the, um, one of the most important things I want you, you to take away from this, something that I've learned through this journey, and it's one of the mottos of the One Project, is you are the most important project of your life. Um, I really think that sometimes we can get in a mindset where we think we're set in our ways, uh, but this journey has led me to realize that uh, I'm something that I need to constantly work on and improve. And I challenge you to uh, get creative, get out of your comfort zone, um, discover, rediscover your authentic self, and thank you.